Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're going to service this bike and do a chain waxing and sort a few problems out on this Boardman SLR road bike. Now Chris Boardman is a legendary rider in the UK especially and he in 2007 went on to have his own bike brand and this is one of his bikes. The early bikes were exceptional value for money but after around six, seven years, the company was sold out and was sold out to one of the major retailers in the UK. But these early bikes were really, really well specced, nice road bikes. So we're gonna actually wax this chain, but you can see here the rear derailleur, the, the tail on the cable is very, very short, but this cable works perfectly. So we're not gonna actually remove this derailleur to clean it up. We're actually gonna just take off the jockey wheels in situ. And you can see here that they need cleaning up ready for chain waxing. But we didn't actually remove that derailleur because of that cable being so short and obviously it has to come through the thumb adjuster to take that off so we elected to leave that on the bike but the front one here you can see how that's got a build up of grease and debris on the derailleur so we're going to put this through the old sonic cleaner when you wax a chain you want your actual original components to be as clean as you can possibly get them you want no oil to contaminate the wax now also here you can see the front brake cables we had sort of an issue with the brake cables they were just a little bit long you can see this one's fouling the other cables and I never like that with a front brake cable I like to make sure that's not fouling any of the other brakes and then also this one was quite looped and you can see here there's a, a mount here for a light but it was catching on it so you were only getting a short rake of steering before that cable was tagging on that bracket there which all right wasn't on the bike originally but you can see if it was just maybe an inch or so shorter you can still get your full lock on the steering, but you won't be catching that bracket. So from a safety aspect, I decided that I would address both of these cables, but actually it was a good job I did, as you'll see as we go on, especially with that front brake cable. But we're initially, we're gonna take off the components, we're gonna clean those up, put those through the ultrasonic cleaner as well. There's no harm in doing that when you're doing a regular service like this. But you can see here that the thumb adjuster on this front was actually broken down on the actual caliper itself so the thumb adjuster here so what I actually decided to do was just drill that out as you know it doesn't take a minute or two really to do so we just took that thumb adjuster off drilled it out and now you can see that the ferrule will sit in there nicely again so that's you know saves us replacing it there's no point in replacing it just for the sake of drilling it out and again the front wheel here no skewer springs on that they're not mechanically required but they just make the wheel easier to seat back in the frame quickly hence quick release so we will address that, put new springs on there as well. So we put everything in the ultrasonic cleaner and away we go. So while I'm cleaning up these parts, we're both, me and Simon, Simon, my son who films all these videos, we're thrilled with the way the YouTube channel's going. We're growing and growing and growing. So if you're new to the channel, if this is the first video you're watching, this is the kind of thing we do each week. We service a customer's bike on film. We don't go as if we're doing our own bikes fully restoring, we're doing them in a practical manner. This is day in, day out work for us. And this is the kind of work and the, the attention that we spend on a bike for our regular servicing. So this is what we're doing here today. So do subscribe, do like the video, make sure you comment early as soon as you see this video going out because the comments, subscribers, the likes, everything else helps the algorithms to get a video to perform well. And it helps us as a channel to grow when a video performs well. We see leaps and bounds when a video starts getting served up by YouTube. And uh, we're thrilled with the way the channel's going. So now we're just relubricating parts that have been cleaned. We're oiling them. We're using copper slip. We're using thin grease on pivot points. This is sort of a well-practiced routine that you'll see in our other videos as well, where we explain them as well. Even a little bit of silicon grease on there, where the slider of that spring goes up and down on the caliper itself. So there was three or four greases used just on that brake caliper itself. Now we get asked this quite regularly, what wax do we use? We're using molten speed wax and we put that into a slow cooker that warms it up and makes it become liquid wax, molten wax, hence their use of molten speed powder. So that goes in there. You can see we've got a little bit in the bottom there. We don't actually keep that too deep because obviously you've got to heat it up every time. So we keep that fairly shallow, but we top it up regularly as we're doing chain waxing and then once that's dried we break that the wax sort of makes the chain go hard we break that down and then molten speed powder also do what they call their m speed powder which is what we're using here so we're using molten speed wax molten speed powder to finish that off the powder is supposed to help a few extra watts and a little bit less friction on the chain we just find it gives a nice finish to, 
to what we're doing and just sort of makes it finalized really the process so next up we just clean up everything again we're just cleaning up the wheel checking the hub checking the spokes I, I love the tactile feel of cleaning the bike to be able to check and find problems that you sometimes won't find by just taking a part off and putting it back on so you can see now we're just rebuilding that wheel and then we just use a soapy wash this is I mean there's there's many different soap washes out there available for bike washing we initially use one of those that helps soften the dirt and then we agitate it here with a nice nylon brush before wiping it down with a microfiber towel and the bikes are then spotlessly clean when they go out and now we're just rebuilding that rear derailleur in situ on the bike so you can see that tag hasn't been affected at all and we're lubricating that on the bike as well as we would if it had been through the ultrasonic clean you can see it's still spotlessly clean even by doing it on the bike rebuilding the chain set everything going back with the you know the correct greases the correct tools the correct torques your torque specs are very important that's another question we get asked where do we get the specs of talking from well we get that from experience we know the size of the bolt we know the fitting that it's going in you can research them all online you'll get them online so as you can see here with the brake we never actually replaced the cable we we feathered that out we cut a couple of inches off the outer and then we pushed the old cable back through the cables were working perfectly they were just a bit long so there's no need to replace them at this stage of the bike so we literally shortened the outer put the inner back in everything back together again and as you'll see that everything worked absolutely perfectly once it was once it was all back in we always copper slip those bolts that are in the frame there to stop them sticking in the future because it's very common for those to get stuck a lot of mud and debris goes up around your wheels there flicks into the brake fittings and they can end up being hard to undo so that's why we cobble slip those now you can see there that actually that front cable was actually frayed so we elected to replace that inner on this one so that's what we were doing there so actually this did have a new cable but all the other cables were fine no need to replace them just to adjust them as necessary and get them back on the bike so you can see here the front derailleur rear derailleur everything's nice now the bike is going back together smoothly and now the freshly waxed chain going back on the bike we'd measured that it wasn't stretched completely beyond usability so that'll probably do two or even three full waxings on that chain and you can see now it's changing gear nicely we just check and adjust anything as necessary adjust the brakes get them all torqued up once we've kind of got the integral parts of the bike back together once everything we know is clean oil lubricated we then start putting the bike back together and then we start running through the bike with the torque wrench on as many as the bolts as, as we can practically do and, and check so you can see here we're checking the stem you can see these brake levers were actually quite loose so we torque those up fittings that we already took apart ourselves we torque brake pads pinch bolts mount bolts seat clamp seat post everything is checked when we do a service we literally run front to back check and adjustment of everything on a bike even the chain rings pedals etc we really work through every single nut and bolt and check them we either torque them or check them with allen keys spanners whatever it be depending on the age of the bike and you can see here we're working right the way through we literally work front to back and then we just check things like the fittings the bottle cages inflate the tires and then this bike we know is absolutely ready to go with a freshly waxed chain all the cables correct safe on the steering and as you can see what a difference we make to a bike with just a simple service this was literally a straight through service and chain waxing so thanks for watching like and subscribe and we'll see you again next week